What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name's Gym Leader Geo, and this is The Locker Room, week 10 of season four of the GBA. And this week, our opponent is going to be the Cincinnati Loudrids and their coach, Mulvone, uh, or Andrew. Now, Mulvone has had an incredible season, guys. He's a shoe in for the playoff. He locked up his conference a while ago. He's uh, the only person that's been able to dethrone... <laughs> Uh, Miguel, even if there were circumstances tied to that, doesn't matter. You got to play every game. Uh, you got to know as much as you possibly can about the game because otherwise, stuff like that happens. And, and he's played great. People uh, really made fun of his draft, but as you guys will see, it <laughs> matches up pretty well against me. But overall, he's just he's just a great player, and he's really taken very well to this format, and he's done a really great job this season. Um, I think he's uh, eight and one. Or, uh, he played Shady last week, it's possible Shady won, I'm not sure what the outcome of that match was, I only really watched, um, last week the only matches I really watched, normally I watch all the GBA matches, I try and watch it from everyone's perspective, but this last week I only really had time to watch my friends, so I watched, um, uh, Miguel's and I watched Hank's, and I think I tried to watch some of Shady's, but I think I fell asleep watching it, um, not because it was boring, guys, because... I was watching it in bed. That's normally how, how I watch most of the GBA matches, lying in bed. So, uh, I'm not sure what the outcome of that is. I think he's 8-1, and one, but he might be 7-2. and two. We'll see. Get out of here! Goodness me, my phone, though. Anyway, so, uh, great player. Uh, I'm currently 4-5, and five, and we're looking to make this a 5-5 five and five season, guys. If we can have a 5-5 five and five season, I am so happy with how this season turned out, you know? A lot of unlikely contenders on my team. As you know, I'll, I'll be looking forward to Season 5 where I can draft a better team. You know, I just, I don't know. I, I thought I understood the draft process, and I thought I, I built a team that was going to work well. And honestly, I just, I got to tell you, it, it, it fell short for me. So we are going to, uh, I'm going to go over the team that he could potentially be bringing. Mr. Mulvone has a team that comprises of Mega Manectric, Keldeo, Glyscore, Weavile, Fortress, Gastrodon, The Vion, Talonflame, Zygarde, Gallade, and Dragalge. Dragalge. Dragluge. I don't care, guys. <laughs> I really don't care. Let's see. Let's go to the team builder and uh, we'll sort of put things together. As you can see, it's going to be a rain week for us. A um, couple of reasons for that. Uh, Choice Specs Keldeo, either one hit KOs or two hit KOs everybody, regardless of whether the rain's up or not, and I think I can use it to my advantage in other ways. Um, this team's gone through a few mix-ups throughout the time, but ultimately I, I think what I my concept for this team was confuse the crap out of Mulvone. And hopefully this works. Um, because if not, it really puts me in a disadvantage, but. I took a page out of a GLG The Return series playbook, and I got a lot of choice on this team. So let's uh, quickly run over everything I've brought, and then we'll talk about the Pokemon a little bit more in depth. We've got a bulky Dragon Dance GLaDOS, who's running Waterfall, Bounce, Earthquake, Dragon Dance. Uh, I'll just go over everything. Uh, we've got a bulky Dragon Dance Gyarados with leftovers. We've got two chains with a choice scarf. We've got Bunny Sore with a choice scarf. We've got Remix with a choice scarf. <laughs> We've got Uncle Buck, and we've got Dollar Bills with Leftovers, not with Damp Rock. Um, so let's start over at the front. GLaDOS is here for a very important reason, um, Talonflame. So um, I'll sort of talk about the team, because a lot of these Pokemon are here specifically for one or two threats, and that's it. So things that I'm fairly certain I know. Mega Manectric is definitely coming. Mega Manny. Uh, we know that Weavile is for sure coming. This is this guy's MVP, maybe even the MVP of the entire season. This guy is power and going to be a real problem for me. Um, I'm going to predict the Keldeo is coming too, simply because if he predicts the rain, it's going to do a massive number to me. Um, I also predict it's going to be Specs because it's fast enough to outspeed most of my threats. Um, and then looking at the rest of his team... It's kind of hard to say. He's got a lot of bulk, but he has the potential to go hyper offense. And I think I'm fearing the hyper offense more than anything else. He's got a lot of great middle ground Pokemon. But for me and the kind of team I have, which is a lot of really weird raw power in different various elements of my stats. Like Uncle Buck, so strong. GLaDOS, so strong if you let him set up. Bunny Sore, so defensive. 
You know, but it's like, then don't focus on that part of the match. Focus on this part of it. You know what I mean? So there's ways around my team, and I predict that he's going to go hyper offense to try and take advantage of that. So for that reason, I predict Talonflame is also coming. Um, and then I predict uh, probably the Gliscor. It could be the Gastrodon. It could be. Like, that's a little asterisk there, because that could be a Gastrodon. But they're very similar defensively, with only a few notable differences. Like, one of them's four times weak to grass, the other uh, is, uh, is neutral to it. Um, and one of them's weak to... Whatever. Like, the thing is, I, I think Gliscor is probably a little bit better. The Gastrodon is, like I said, I gotta predict this team of six. I gotta predict it and I gotta play based on that because I gotta prepare for everything, but you can't over prepare for threats that you don't think are coming. So let me, that's why I'm going over these six. Gastrodon could come because Storm Drain would be very useful for his team given the amount of water power that I have on my on my roster. But I predict Gliscor um, because he's brought it a lot more. And then uh, the last Pokemon, I think Fortress because I think it gives him for a dress because it gives him options with um, gives him options with uh, rapid spinning and setting up hazards of his own and uh, he's got a slow volt turn for momentum so that's the six I predict he's bringing and uh, we can look at this and we see well we've got three four blazing fast threats a pretty fast defensive mon and then fortress and so I looked to that and I said you know what Speed has got to be the, the the way to win this match is to get to the finish line guys So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to get to the finish line This is a finish line flag guys That's what this is finish line flag here. I'm not gonna waste the time drawing within the lines guys I'm drawing with a mouse and there's a little bit of lag. It's very hard to do. Okay fine I'll try and fill in the boxes all the way. There's if this is what you guys want this is what you got. He's got. He's gonna have like a pole head at the top. You know, it's gonna be like a, an eagle. It's gonna be like a bald eagle at the top. It kind of looks like a volaby. Doesn't that look like volaby a little bit? Like a little baby chicken? No, that's a bald eagle, guys. Um, so you're welcome for that. And uh, it's gonna be planted. You know, you know it's gonna be. Some dude is holding it up and waving it around. He's super strong. Look at that. His arm is fully extended, and he's just like this flag is bigger than me, and just holding it up over his head. Or maybe it's like a perspective thing, like the camera's like here and the flag's right here, and he's just kind of like, yeah. Maybe it's like that. I'm not sure, but that's this is the six that I predict he's bringing. And so to that, I thought. These Pokemon are all really fast, but they're not so fast that I can't outspeed them with Choice Scarfs. And a lot of these Pokemon, if outsped by a Choice Scarf, get kind of devastated. So, GLaDOS, um, I was considering choicing him just to go like, stick with the theme, but there's really no point and I need him for very specific reasons. So, Dragon Dance once, I mean, I can find turns to Dragon Dance with GLaDOS uh, all day. Um, and if I do successfully find that opportunity, a Dragon Dance will be the same as me being Choice Scarf, except that I also get an additional power for it. I'm going bulky set with Leftovers because that means GLaDOS can switch in on a Talon Flame and either take it out with a Waterfall or get a setup option off for myself. Uh, it just gives me an option to Talon Flame so that he doesn't just get a kill every time he switches in. Uh, it also matches up relatively well against Keldeo. With the bounce, I can one-hit KO it. Uh, of course, Keldeo will outspeed, and so we have to play around that. But uh, that's that's an option there. Could have gone Ice Fang for Gliscor, but I think Waterfall will do just fine. Waterfall is going to be okay. Uh, we're packing the Earthquake for Mega Manectric uh, just to try and hit it on the switch. It's a pretty obvious uh, opportunity to come in and, and hit GLaDOS. But with a Dragon Dance up, I should be able to outspeed it and hit it with an Earthquake. Uh, so there's that. Uh, I was considering bringing Rocks because that would hit, um, you know, that would hit Talon Flame. It also hit Vivion. As, at the end of the day, I had to say, what will be will be with, Vivi with Vivian. Uh, Bunny Sore is, he, with any special attacker that's not really strong, specially, Bunny Sore can handle it. Bunny Sore can handle Vivian all day. He can't go for Sleep Powder because I will just Bunny Sore that shit up. Uh, pardon my language. And... <laughs> And I think just everything will be, be okay in that regard. So I'm not really worried about that. So I opted not to bring the rocks there. Earthquake will hit uh, Dragalge and Mega Manectric really hard. So that was that set. Two, uh, the EV spread that I have here is 
uh, as much HP as possible to get the highest HP stat while maintaining an odd number so that I can get an additional switch in on rocks if need be. Um, max attack and then just a little in speed just to get to uh, a nice number there. So that is the GLaDOS set. We've got two chains here who is coming back. Two chains is going Choice Scarf, Psychic, Ice Beam, Stealth Rock, and U-Turn. Now, I know it's weird to put Stealth Rock on a Choice Scarfer, but I've run tournament teams with, uh, for example, my... Uh, for a while ago, I had the Faithful Six that won a Shady Penguin tournament a while ago. That that won me like 50 bucks. That was I'm not playing around with that. And I ran an Excadrill with Choice Scarf that ran Rapid Spin and also Stealth Rock. And you might think that that's a very bizarre set, but it works perfectly because you're able to... Get those rocks off if you need to, and a lot of time with Excadrill, he's forcing switches anyway, so you just switch out next turn to get away from that. It works very well in kind of a defensive or like a really slippy, slippery team where you can move around stuff. Um, and the thing is, is that he's got knockoff potential on his team. He's got a Weavile, and while I don't want to take a knockoff from a Weavile, I could also take a knockoff from a Gliscor, and it wouldn't do that much. Um, so that was my thought process behind the Scarf. With, with the Scarf, and with the Psychic Stab, I'm actually able to outspeed and one-hit KO the Keldeo. Keldeo is a big problem, not for the same reason as Talonflame. Talonflame is this really weird kamikaze bird that's just gonna murder my team. And I'm back. Sorry guys, the phone was ringing. So where we were, the Choice Scarf will allow me to outspeed Keldeo. Psychic can one-hit KO it. The Ice Beam is mostly for Gliscor. Um, I could have just gone with the Psychic. And, you know, I could have gone also with, like, a Hidden Power Fire for the Fortress or something like that. Hidden Power Grass for the, uh, if I was predicting the Gastrodon. Um, but Ice Beam is good for Zygarde, it's good for Dragalge, it's good for, um, Gliscor. And ultimately, Psychic will be for everything else, uh, as far as my attacking moves are concerned. We've got Stealth Rocks, as I mentioned earlier. And then U-Turn is because I think I'll... Two chains will frequently bait in the Weavile, and I think it's a really good way to get mo some momentum off. Um, I contemplated where to put these stats, and I ended up going with just enough that I could outspeed a... Uh, what was it? It was a Timid Weavile, because I predict that's the fast... Not Timid, Jolly Weavile, because I think that's the fastest thing he would bring. Obviously, Talonflame is a little faster, but he needs to go adamant for that extra power. Otherwise, you can't one-hit KO two chains anyway. Um, Mega Manectric at 135 is actually faster also, but uh, I don't know. I think I just... I, I couldn't... I didn't want to play around with dropping power in order to do that. So, this is the set that I'm running for that. Bunny Sword is coming, and this is my big set. I'm really hoping this works out. I've actually played out a scenario in my head that I think could work out really well that I'll explain in a second. Gudra is running Sap Sipper Choice Scarf Physical Set. And the reason for that is, after the potential sap super boost, and I definitely predict there are scenar there's a scenario here where I can get that boost off, then I can just proceed to Outrage and his team does not like it at all. Outrage, even against some of his uh, physically defensive threats, is a 2 or 3 hit KO. Um, with the Sap Sipper, it's almost guaranteed a 2 hit KO on everything. Earthquake is to hit that Mega Manectric, if I can, if I'm predicting the switch. It's also really good against Dragalge, who's also hit super hard by Outrage, but I, I think I just wanted it there as a little bit of more coverage. I could have gone for an Ice Beam here, but Outrage will do fine. Uh, Fire Punch is there for the Fortress, who otherwise walls most of my set. And the superpower is to guarantee a 1 hit KO on Weavile, and that is the big thing. Bunny Soar's job today is to come in as a revenge option or a U-turn option where I think he will bring in Weavile. Because he's going to predict that he'll outspeed and he'll either go for like a knockoff predicting my switch or a, a, like an ice punch just to really guarantee the takeout. He's not going to go for an ice shard on me. I don't predict that. And if he does, it won't kill me and I will kill him back. Bunny Soar is the anti-Weavile. I know it's bizarre, but it is the one thing that I can confidently say will bait out the Weavile, and he'll be able to take it out. That is Bunny Soar's job this match. He's running just enough speed EVs to outspeed a jolly um, max speed Weavile. Uh, I put as much as I can into attack so that I'm hitting really hard. I put the rest in HP to get an odd HP stat, and then with the dump I just put into special defense. No special attack since I'm not running any special attacks on this guy. 
Remix, my third choice, Scarfer. Remix returns to the fray. He's going to be a really safe switch in for me to a lot of things. Um, he's got a lot of really great abilities on some of his Pokemon. Gastrodon has Storm Drain, for example, and he packs Scald, and he's, he's probably going to go for it a lot because um, my team has a lot of physical threats, and he's going to want to get the burn off. So I can switch into Remix and eat that up. Um, Mega Manectric is a really weird Pokemon for his team because before he Mega Evolves, he has Lightning Rod. And so you can switch in with Ditto on that Lightning Rod, trace the Lightning Rod on the non-Mega Evolved Manectric as he Mega Evolves, and he goes for, like, a Thunderbolt or a Volt Switch or something like that. And then I eat that up, get the special attack boost, and with the Choice Scarf, I'm actually then faster and hitting uh, just as hard as a Mega Manectric, but I can Volt Switch and he cannot. So that's a really big, uh, a couple of those moves there that I, I predict Remix will be useful for. He'll be re useful if I want to get some Rapid Spin off or something like that, uh, because he can switch in on Fortress. Um, he's really good for scouting sets, predicting whether or not people have, um, you know, you can look at a set and see whether or not they're scarfed or predict if, they're, if they have a choice of some kind. You can see uh, hidden powers and stuff like that, and uh, and that's him. Um, Uncle Buck is coming back because I decided to bring the rain this week. The real reason for that is that looking at the other Pokemon on my team, I don't want to try and get a, a Baton Pass game going with um, with Scallopede. Electivire is a risky mon because he's not he's never a safe switch in, unlike Uncle Buck. Um, and also part of really what I want to do, Bunnysaur is kind of going to be the star of this show here, and part of the way I want to go about achieving that is predicting that someone has a hidden power grass and will pump it on Uncle Buck. This is the scenario I was talking about earlier, guys. Um, in almost every scenario I've seen, these are my two leads. And depending on the Pokemon he brings, um, it's possible I can see a scenario where I'm in with Dollar Bills and he's in with Mega Manectric. And he'll probably go for a lightning attack, which I can, you know, it's the safe move, um, and I can switch into Uncle Buck. Then he's get, I'm gonna from that bait out a grass type attack, and I can switch into Bunny Sore. And at that point, it's off to the races. I can start pumping out massive damage with the outrage. So that's sort of the scenario I built. And when I looked at my other Pokemon, I didn't see any way I would ever get that Sap Sipper boost off with Bunny Sore because no one else is a good target for a grass type attack. Um, so honestly, it's 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 a lot of it's there to sort of predict and to work with scenarios that I can definitely see coming to fruition. It just depends on how the Pokemon play out, and if not, it's still useful to have that Sap Zipper option, even if I'm not getting the special attack boost from it. Um, there's no reason for me to go for Hydration here because I just I don't feel like I need it, and Gooey. Um, I have a lot of choice scarfs on this team because I've built it in a very specific way, so I don't need to play with the, I don't need to play with the gooey here. So Uncle Buck is coming. He's going to be a very bulky sweeper here. Um, at the speed investment he's got, when he mega evolves, he'll be able to outspeed Mega Manectric. Um, he's got as much HP and attack as I could go for the rest of that. I could have gone one more here to really max out attack, but the reason I opted to do this is because I wanted HP to be 201. I wanted a nice um, odd number once again, and I'm willing to lose one attack point in order to achieve that. So that's Uncle Buck's set. Um, relatively standard. And then we have Dollar Bills making it rain, this guy. He's Drizzle. He's Leftovers instead of Damp Rock, and that's because I don't want to play with leaving the rain up too long. I don't need it for defensive reasons, and there are opportunities where he could take advantage of it, either by running Thunder on stuff or, um, you know, just fire is not going to be a very effective thing against my team. I don't need it defensively. I need it for Uncle Buck to get a couple of attacks off, but it's not like, I'm not likely going to encounter a scenario where I can set up the rain, leave Uncle Buck in for eight turns. That's just not how the GBA works. So I don't need it. I don't want it. I want the leftovers recovery. I'm running a fully physically defensive set. Truth be told, this is a very rushed set. I, I maybe I should be running special defensive, but it's an additional help for me against Talonflame. And uh yeah, I don't know. So I've got a very interesting set here. It's Scald, Whirlpool, Parish Song, Protect. I really hope it ends up working out for me, but he's got a lot of Pokemon that it won't work against. Um, a lot of Pokemon that it'll work against depending on the set, but ultimately the trick is you Parish Song, 
uh, and you're going to take an attack in the process. You protect because most people don't see it coming and you get a little health back. You go for the Whirlpool to lock them in, and then the next turn, they're going to get one more attack off on you. You protect again, and then they die. So, <laughs> it's a great set. I'm really excited to use it. I hope it'll work. I've done some calcs. It won't work against Mega Manectric. It will work against Keldeo unless it's a choice Specs Keldeo. It will work against Gliscor. It will work against Weavile. It will work against Fortress unless the Fortress has Volt Switch, because you can Volt Switch out. It will... In theory, it will work against the Gastrodon, except that Gastrodon will probably have Storm Drain, so we can't be trapped by Whirlpool. It will work against Vivian. Um, a Talonflame, I would just Scald. It'll work against Zygarde. Uh, Gallade can probably kill me with Leaf Blade, so it probably won't work against Gallade, and uh, depends on the Dragology set a lot. Um, so there's a lot of Pokemon on the scene that it can work against. It's kind of dependent, but that's sort of what I'm going for there. Obviously, Scald in the Rain is going to do a hefty amount of damage too. So uh, we'll see. It's it's a very unique set, um, but it's you know I think it's it gives me some options against some of the potential Pokemon on the team. So that's my team this week, guys. Uh, let me know what you would have done differently. Any ideas you guys have, and just let me know in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.